Hello and welcome to this video. If you are somewhat new to Jira and you see the term issue or issues on many Jira screens, you might be wondering what Jira issues are, what are different issue types, how to use them, and what are Jira tickets. In this video, I will explain Jira issues or tickets, which is the same thing, using many examples. I will review all issue types and their purpose, and I will show you how to create and manage Jira issues. After watching the video, you will be able to apply the learnings to your own work, identify the correct issue type for your own situation, create issues in Jira, and process them through different work stages. This video is primarily intended for beginner and intermediate Jira users, but the concepts discussed are applicable for any proficiency level, and watching it will likely be worthwhile. Enjoy the video. In simple words, teams using Jira software utilize issues to track individual work items that must be completed. Depending on how a specific team uses Jira, an issue could be anything that will eventually get someone's attention required to achieve some sort of completion. That is a bit of an academic statement and it is quite abstract. So let's try to use some specific real life examples to help describe the concept. For instance, if you plan a vacation trip, you might have a list of things that you need to do before the start of vacation. Those things would likely be some or all of these. Research destinations and deals, book personal time off at work, book airfare, book hotel accommodations, buy travel insurance, book boarding for the dog. You can probably take care of all of these things without creating a JIRA project to manage your vacation preparation. But if you actually do end up going that far, each item from the list will become a JIRA issue. At the start, when the list is created, all these issues will be in a pending status, waiting to be dealt with. Eventually, one after another, they will be taken care of and their status will change to complete. If you want to be more precise, you can introduce the in-progress status for each issue you started working on, but have not completed yet. What I just described here, the shift from pending to in-progress and then to complete, is an example of a workflow. Let's go through another example, one more suitable to be managed in Jira. Say you are working on a software project and you are asked to close the remaining gaps in the user authentication system. These gaps are described in an email you received and they are a lack of functionality for a password reset and changing the email address. Also, phone number should be added to user profile. There are also known problems regarding username allowing usage of space character and validating the username's length is not working. On top of that, you are also asked to ensure that all user records that have not been active in the last five years become deleted and that the user database is re-indexed. That seems like another list of things that need to be done, and it goes like this. Enable password reset. Enable email address change add phone number to user profile, username should not allow space characters, username length should be validated, delete users not active in the last five years, re-index user database. Although short, this list is a good candidate for tracking in Jira, so let's enter it there. It is clear that each item will become a Jira issue, but there are several issue types to choose from. Before we start entering our list in Jira, we will review what these types are and how items from the list match them. The first issue type is the story, and it is used to describe a new functionality, a new feature, something that your users will care about. Looking through our list's first three items, enabling password reset and email address change and adding phone number certainly qualify as something users are interested in. Let's mark them as stories. But what about the remaining items? Will users like your application more if spaces are allowed in username 
or if interactive users are deleted? Probably not. So items four to seven are definitely not story type. The next issue type is bug, which represents something that does not work as expected and needs to be fixed. A problem that we have and we want to correct. Items four and five are clearly something that falls into that category. You wanted the username to be validated and space character not allowed in it, but for whatever reason, it is not working and it needs fixing. So these two are becoming bugs. The last issue type is task, which represents a work that needs to be completed, but it is not a feature that users care about and neither is it a work to fix something that is currently not working as expected. The last two items six and seven qualify for this category because you will be doing them to keep your app in the good health, not to correct a problem or to please a user. I will tag items six and seven as tasks. We mapped all our items in the list, but there is still one more issue type, the epic type. Often we refer to a group of features as a feature as well, silently assuming it is clear to everyone that there is some sort of hierarchy in place. For example, shopping cart is a common feature in e-commerce applications. Still, there is a set of features that all belong to the shopping cart, such as adding items to cart or removing items from cart or adding multiple items or showing related items and many more. That is where Epic is becoming useful. It is used to group related issues under the one umbrella issue. The previous example shopping cart will become an Epic and all other items mentioned like adding and removing products to and from the shopping cart will be stories or other issue types. Let's see how to apply that to our example. When we talk about username and the password, that is all part of user authentication functionality, which becomes our epic. Items 1, 4, and 5 seem to be a good fit for that, and they should all belong to user authentication epic. User profile functionality is about maintaining a user record, including name, address, phone number, etc. Items 2 and 3, email address change and phone number, are definitely part of that. So let's relate them to user profile epic. Two remaining items don't seem to belong to any higher level functionality. So we will leave them without the epic, which is perfectly fine. Belonging to an epic is not mandatory. Now we can start entering our list in Jira. Jira issues must belong to a project. And I have this practice project that I will be using in this example. This project is using the Kanban template in the classic Jira project. If you are using a different template or a next-gen project, your screen might look slightly different, but the concepts are still the same. Issues are created using the Create button in the top navigation, which is available on all Jira screens. I will start with two epics first, followed by other issues. Clicking the Create button brings up the Create issue pop-up. The first thing we should make sure of is that the correct issue type is selected here. I will start with entering our two epics first, so having epic type selected works out well. Next, I have to give the epic a name and a summary. The summary field is a bit of duplication of the name, so let's enter user authentication in both fields. The description field is where you would provide the full description and details about the epic. I will leave it empty for now for the sake of time. Next, several fields are used in all issue types. The reporter field captures a user who created the issue. Linked issues are a way to create dependencies between issues, such as one is blocked by another. The assignee is used to assign an issue to a specific user. Priority field is self-explanatory, and label is used to tag the issue with freeform tags. All looks good, and click on the Create button finally creates this epic, and you can see its card appearing in the Kanban board. Let's use the same steps to create the second epic. Start with the Create button in the top nav, 
give it the name and summary, and the name would be user profile this time. Leave the remaining fields with the default values and click create. And the second epic appears on the board. Epics are done now, and we will move to the stories next. It starts the same way, the create button at the top, but now I have to change the issue type to story. There is no name field in the story type, but the summary field serves that purpose. The remaining fields are the same as when we were creating the epic, except for the epic link field at the bottom. That field is used to establish which epic the story belongs to. So we should set its value to user authentication. Once done, click on the create button and the story comes up on the board. Notice that each ticket has a unique identifier, the PP1, PP2, and PP3. Also, there are different icons to distinguish between different issue types, purple for epic and green for the story. The steps I followed for the first three issues apply to the creation of any issue. There are six more issues to create, but as I explained, it is quite repetitive, so I will stop the recording while I do that. Now we have our list of seven items in Jira, and notice they're all sitting in the backlog. The backlog is an essential concept in Jira. It contains all issues that are still waiting to be processed, meaning no work has been done yet. While in the backlog, issues should be sorted based on their priority, so if I think that two bugs should be done first, I will simply drag them to the top of the backlog. When an issue is ready for the work to start, it will be moved to the next phase, which is selected for development in this workflow. When work starts, it will be moved to in progress status and finally to done status when work is completed. One after another, issues are progressing through the board providing solid insights into how much work is done and what is still left to be done. Once all tickets are moved in the done state, the project can be considered complete. This concludes the overview of what JIRA issues are, what they are used for, and how to use them. They described individual pieces of work that need to be done. They are used to plan work and monitor progress, and that is done using JIRA boards. You now have the basics required to start using JIRA issues, and I hope you enjoy the video.